Okay. Good morning. My name's Rochelle Bull. I'm the local history officer here at Gympie Regional Libraries. I hope you can see me. Maybe you can't see me. Okay. I've got screen share on at the moment. Um, we'll get a start. I've got a couple of attendees here and hopefully we have a few more that come in. So welcome along. Today's going to be a fun journey. We're doing um, house histories. So I have been a um, local history officer for about 18 months, coming up two years. Um, I am a fifth generation and sixth generation local, so I love my job, best job in the world. Um, and we are going to do our, our little talk all about how Gibby Regional Libraries can help you in your journey of, of researching your house or somebody else's house, it could be a friend's house or a relative's house or one that you grew up in. Um, and where else you can go with that research, so um, outside of what I can help you with. Um, so let's start. Um, just a little housekeeping to let you know that this is actually being recorded today and will be made available um, on our Gimpy Regional Library's YouTube channel. Um, it will be edited. There'll be a couple of things um, edited out but the bulk of the, the talk will be up on our uh, Gippy Regional Library's YouTube channel if you haven't had a look go over and check it out sometime we've got lots of other different interesting um, videos up there including some local history talks that I've done previously um, you can ask questions in the session I have got your microphones um, on mute but you can raise your hand um, or try the chat box um, and I can unmute your microphones and you can talk or you can um, type in a question as well and that will come through to me. So we'll get a start now. Um, let's go to my next slide. I'll just move a box off my screen. Hopefully you can all see that. Um, so where to start? The first thing that um, we recommend is to gather all the things that you already know about your property. So start to collate things. And some of these may include stories from your neighbours um, or previous owners, uh, any documentation that you've had in uh, purchase of the property. Uh, so you can also make note of significant features of your house and property. So both inside and the outside, um, architectural um, styles and era, what you think, uh, anything that you um, of note. So things that um, I have had people come to me maybe, especially in Gympie, that it might have been on um, an old mine. So you might have an old mine and evidence of this is, are the ones that have been capped and might have a little air pipe vent coming out of it um, and other little things. So anything that is old and original is worthy of note. Um, and where your property is located can be quite important as well. So we think about where we can find more information. So if your property um, isn't directly in Gympie Town, you might be out in a locality. For example, you might be at Myva or Thebine. So how can we find more information about your property? So we'll, let's do this journey. So what next? Once you have all this information that you can gather, you might not have anything, but have a think about what you can bring. Um, and particularly first um, is stuff from the sale of your property. So if you've got anything like plan numbers, um, any, any little maps or details that came with your contract, bring them in and um, I can have a look at those as well. So where can you find further information? So some of the places that you can find, you can do a general web search because you never know what um, is going to crop up. Um, you can sometimes get results of um, people that have blogs, for example, and that also includes us at Gimpy Regional Library. So I will show you that later. 
Um, so don't discount a general Google search or web search and have a little look around. Um, you can not just add your um, street address, take out the number. So sometimes less is more. So if you're looking up like number 25 Smith Street, um, just do a search off Smith Street with your locality as well. Um, also, other places that can be of assistance is, of course, your local library. So Gympie Regional Libraries. Here we have a local history room, which I will tell you about what we can we have in this room to help you. Um, and also your state library. So the State Library of Queensland has some wonderful resources as well. So I will we'll show you those um, shortly as well. And then in your locality, so I'm just being general here because you might be watching from outside the Gympie region, but does your locality or region have a local history organisation? Um, the Gympie region does, and we'll talk about that again later. Um, and so other areas in the council may be able to help you as well. Um, and other go government departments, so there are some that we'll talk about. And as well, of course, the newspapers. So we're going to discuss how you can actually access the newspapers and, and what you can look for in the newspapers as well. And if possible, contact your organisation and um, make, try and make an appointment to see somebody. Um, and you can start local and then move through to other areas. So you're quite um, welcome to contact me here at the local history room. I work Wednesday to Fridays, but um, the library staff here can take your query if you do contact us on, on other days. Um, I work, as I said, Wednesday to Fridays and um, yeah, you can ring me up. Our library number is 54810859, but you can look that up. We have our website, um, Give Your Regional Library's website. You can do a Google search. We have our Facebook page and we also have a YouTube channel and a, and a local history blog. So I'll share some of those in a moment. So if you come, um, if you want to take, make an appointment with me or another local history organisation, take as much information as you can to the appointment. So things like your deeds, any survey plans, stories, any information you've been given, even if you're not sure that it, it you know, that we can, if you know that it's true, if you've just heard something about the house, that's stuff that we can, it gives us a lead at least to go with. Um, a list of any observations, as I said earlier, about architectural styles um, and any questions you have. If you want to specifically know something or you want to know as much as possible. Um, and it also helps if you take a photograph um, of your house or any features of the house as well. And some things, in interesting things to consider. So the street names sometimes change. So if your house is in a street, it may have not always been known as that street or um, sometimes it there's realignments and over time and development, there's, there are some change. So that's something that we always keep in the back of our mind. The house that you have may not be the original or first house built there. So if we think about, especially with Gimpy's history of floods, fires, structural damage, so very, very um, early pioneers that came in the gold rush or earlier than the gold rush, they came in and, and built um, their structures and got them up and, and those some of those ones were very like shanties so they may not have um, been built or designed to be long term so um, your house we might find history of ownership or people on that property but it's the architectural style that really determines where when that house was on the property because there could have been somebody there in a structure that was in the 18, 1868 and it, your house may not be an 1868 style. And a big thing is, was your property moved from somewhere else? And sometimes this is where it gets a little bit tricky. I have researched properties um, that have moved from like the CBD of Gympie and have moved out to outer localities in the Gympie region. Um, sometimes we don't always know that, but if we have those are the stories that come from families and people 
um, and then we can research that. And photographs also. Um, I'll talk about photographs a bit later as well, but we do have um, photographs here early of the CBD and area significant streets that will give you the view and you can see um, houses along the streets of different eras. And interesting, the house numbering system commenced in 1938 in Gympie. So prior to 1938, we didn't have street numbers. And I'll talk about this a bit later. Okay, so Gympie organisations that can help you. So first up, Gympie Regional Library. So here at the local um, history room, we're located in the Gympie Library. Um, and I will talk um, a little bit shortly about what I can help you with. Um, but there's also the Gympie Family History Society. So they are located on Chapel um, Street, um, which is only just up from the Gympie Library branch um, near the railway underpass. And they ha have a whole lot of archives as well, family histories, house histories, and information that will be of benefit to you. Um, as well. We also have our Gimpy <clears throat> Mining Museum and it has different displays and photographs and information. <coughs> Excuse me, talking too much already. Um, and different organisations have different resources. So depending um, on what kind of um, organisation it is, it's, it's, it's very helpful to go and see some of these recommended other organisations. Department of Natural Resources is also another one, which is helpful for getting copies of titles and deeds. <clears throat> so this is the website. So this is Department of Natural Resources, which is also Department of Natural Resources Mining and Energy, which is what the DNRME stands for. This is the link that takes you directly to um, the titles and valuation section. So you can actually order them online. But we do have a local um, office in Gympie, which is up um, next to Centrelink on O'Connell Street, across from Gold Hills Plaza and Coles. Um, so you can talk to the people there in the office or you can go um, online as well. Now, these links will all be available on our recording at YouTube, as well as I did mention earlier, we do have the Gympie Regional Memories blog, which I will show you in the slideshow, um, towards the end of the slideshow. But um, there is a post on researching your house on our blog, and I'll make sure that all these links are then um, up on our blog post as well as a link to the video. So that will be helpful for you. So let's talk about us, Gympie Regional Libraries. So what resources are accessible with us here at Gympie Regional Libraries? So first and foremost, my most favorite are our valuation registers. Now, in the local history room, we have the Gympie City Council valuation registers from 1914 to 1950, around 1955 is the, the latest. Now these valuation registers are very integral when um, you come to me with a local history query. So what we can look at is, I start at the 1940 register. That's because remember that house numbering system didn't come in until around 1938. So my 1940 valuation register has the actual um, house numbers against the properties. Now the valuation register will, will tell you who the owner of the property is. Sometimes it will tell you the occupier. So it may have been rented out. Um, it also has little bits of notes and all sorts of things. It does show the transfer of and sale of properties. Um, so a lot of these may have an original entry and then there'll be a red line crossed through them with a date and that will be the um, sale. And then the new owner is written there. And in a register, for example, sometimes there can be many. And um, I, I do have these scanned and I do have a magnifying glass and sometimes I have to get in there and read the small writing. What they also tell me is the area of the property. So there are the old measurement. So the area of the property is in roods and perches. 
So some of you may have already heard of that, but if you're of my generation, that's all new to me. So you can have a look at that. There's converters online that tell you actually what roofs and perches are. Um, and there's also sometimes the homestead leases. So the miners' homestead leases, and this number is fantastic if it has one of those um, recorded. A lot of our earlier prior to 1940 registers will have the miners' homestead perpetual leases in there. Um, and that's the old style before we went over to our rates, um, current rate systems. Um, and then some of the CBD areas. So, for example, the picture up on our screen is of Shannon Street. Some of the, early, the township area had sections. So section numbers. Oh, and sometimes we have section numbers. I think one. Um, section numbers will be in alphabet letters. I apologise. <laughs> I had a colleague talking to me. You had people to approve to come into the... <laughs> so I had to just quickly check that. So um, we have um, section numbers. So you, areas like Shannon Street are under U and T and S. So they are on some of our mapping system, old maps. So these are significant for me to then have a look at some of our old maps and which show the allotments and the section of U and, and the allotment number five, section U, allotment number three, section T, allotment number whatever. So they have, that's very um, handy as well. And what they also tell um, me is also the value of the property. So this is in pounds and um, not significant enough um, to be very interesting, but you will see that the um, the value values usually are, are going up slightly. And it's significant too, if you look at the other houses around in the street, um, you can actually see which ones were more valued higher and they might be our prominent houses and our prominent people in the street. Um, so that's interesting as well to have a look at the whole view of the street and the neighbours as well. And that can tell a story too. Who did who did your house, who lived next door? So that, that is interesting as well. So our earliest register is 1914. So we can go back as 1914, but we can go um, even earlier through other records and we'll, we'll talk about that shortly. Um, if your property is not within the jurisdiction of the old Gympie City Council. So back um, in the early times, we had the Gympie City Council. We had the Widgee Shire Council. If your property wasn't in the boundary of town, that would fall under Widgee Shire Council. And sadly, I don't have those registers here in the local history room, but they are held at the Queensland um, at State Archives. Um, the Queensland State Archives is a wonderful repository. It's temperature controlled and it's for the long term as well. Um, so the Widgee Shire Council valuation registers were sent through to um, Queensland State Archives um, quite a while back. Um, and if you're looking for them, I can sort of give you a guide of how to find them. You can do a search on Queensland State Archives website. Um, and, and pop in Widgee Shire Council, like valuation or rate registers, they might be called as well. And there's the results you will get will be lots and lots of dates. So there's lots of them held at Queensland State Archives. Now, with Queensland State Archives, you have to put a request in through Queensland State Archives um, to get a scan or um, a record and there are fees involved unfortunately but that's because there's a bit of work involved with retrieving them out of their archives and then scanning and finding the whole retrieval process will take a little bit of time for the staff there so that will be um, what's involved with the fees and the scanning and providing that to you but very very worthwhile because these valuation registers will tell you a great detail of, of who owned them. So what else can Gympie Regional Libraries help you with? So here in the local history room, we have lots of maps. 
So we have cadastral maps. A lot of these will show you um, sections and portion, land portions. Um, so if you find numbers, old numbers of larger lots or lots, then we can go to these old maps to pinpoint exactly where the property was, especially if we're looking at outer um, localities of the Gympie region. We do have some, and you can see these lovely, beautiful maps up on the screen. We do have some um, sort of specific sections and portion maps and survey maps. Now, we, these don't exist for every street and every lot in Gympie. We, we have some of these in, in our archives. Um, so most of our maps are, have all been um, catalogued now, so you can actually search through our uh, Gympie Regional Library's website and we have our search bar for our catalogue and you can pop in some detail like street um, or locality and search for maps as well. If you need help, come in and see me and I will show you how to do a search and then some of these maps are in our, our back archive room but we also have a map drawer in our local history room. So we have lots of maps, land sale, mining maps. We have a wonderful collection of John Dow maps. John Dow was um, a local teacher that also um, had a passion for, him, for the local area. He collected a lot so we had a lot of those donated to us. Um, we have other local areas, electoral um, lots of maps, so they are wonderful in um, giving us detail. Um, other places you can find maps to uh, I will talk about, and that's through Trove. Um, I've got a message here. I have a question. Okay, how can I find my question? Oh, all right. Okay, so Drew, if you want to just confirm with your question, how about a few examples, please? So I'm just not sure because I missed your question, what that was in relation to that I was talking about earlier. So if you'd like to type in um, what you would like examples for, and I can definitely talk about that. Um, but I'll wait for you to oh, I'll keep an eye on my chat box now. This is my first time I've, of doing a Zoom, so you have to bear with me. I'm learning as I'm going. Examples of some of the significant houses. Okay, well, when we, I run through this, I can quickly go and grab um, a house history. But, um, yes, so I, I don't know if we've actually shared some on our actually on our Gippy Regional Libraries blog, but it would be nice to pop up a few. I guess I think that some of that concern is whether um, I put up a house history and the current owners don't, you know, we've got to respect privacy as well. Um, but if you have a house that you want researched and um, you can come and see me and if you want that up on our blog, we can share that with others. I think uh, there's a little bit of a line there um, if, I, if I pop it up in the the current owners are a little bit, yeah, I'd have to probably get permission first before I shared too much of that. But we do have some wonderful significant houses in, um, especially in Gympie Town, but all over the region as well. There's a, a deep history with the Gympie region, of course. Um, and you can find beautiful early homes, even out, you know, Myva, Thebine, everywhere. Um, and it depends also where that actual locality was established as well. Okay, so Drew saying we're at 16 Clamana Street and we'd love to see what our house looked like before the asbestos was added. Okay, well, Drew, I'd love for you to come in and see me sometime. Um, I was actually looking at Clamana Street just recently. I had a, a query from outside of the region. Somebody's actually researching. Uh, there used to be an old clairvoyant and um, in the old times a lot of the um, travellers or there would be, you know, clairvoyants and what would they would be do, um, yeah, readings and different things from like the Northumberland Hotel but there was one particular madam that was working from a house at Clamata Street um, which was the house of a, a lady that her husband had passed but um, she was had... Um, being a publican of one of the Gympie hotels and she was also letting this clairvoyant work from her house. So it's very interesting. <laughs> so, um, 
Yes. Um, so, yeah, I would love to have a chat with you, Drew, sometime. So if you'd like to get in contact with me sometime at Gimpy Library, you can pop in or give me a call. And, um, yeah, we could do your house history and we can share it um, with others. And um, sometimes you get roadblocks. Sometimes, I mean, the most common request is that people love to see a photo of their house as early as possible. So if your house was like, for example, built in 1893, of course everyone would love to see a photo of what that house looked like in 1893. But we're talking about photography and did people take photos? Have you taken a, have you gone and taken a photo of your house this year? Because there are photos of significant homes, but there's not photos of every single house or every single street. In the region so that's that's where we we're, we're lucky if we come across it but we always look so that's the good thing we always look and that's the thing is also going on your house history journey and looking at that the past ownership and then looking at those people and who lived there and then doing that sort of ancestral people research and you can actually then look at um, who the people lived and then contact those family um, members in uh, through genealogy. Um, and then, you you know, people do have photos in their personal collections. So um, people will have things in their family that we, we haven't seen yet. So that's, that's um, another thing. There's lots of things to think of when you're, you're doing historical research, of course. Um, uh, Drew's just writing another comment. Um, Google Maps has, yeah, of course, yeah. Google Maps does have the Street View images. Um, yeah, so you got me there. <laughs> but yeah, you know, in I'm talking, you know, pre-internet. Did, for example, the house that I grew up in. Um, there's only a, a couple of photos, maybe of us riding bikes in front of it in the 1980s. So, yeah. So it just just depends on who took photos. Of, of the street or, or people outside of houses. Um, yeah, but we'll, I will talk about where you can find other photos as well. So I'll get back on track and um, let's go on to my next slide. Ooh, ooh, going too far. There's just an example of um, parts of maps that we have as well. And some of our early maps, which is wonderful, has ownership, so names of people on the maps is just fantastic to find. So let's have a look also. We, here at Gippie Regional Libraries, we also have our research archives. So we do have house histories that have already been compiled um, and those houses get bought and sold. So if you've recently bought a house, I may have done, or we have archives of snippets and bits and pieces of houses sometimes um what the snippets that we have aren't the entire history so we work on what we find the snippets and then we build more on that um as i said i've only been in the role for just under two years so um i have had quite a few house queries it's one of our common um queries here um so we're starting to build a collection of house histories here as well. Um, some information that we might have, or we do have on prominent houses. Um, in our vertical files, we do, the, now I'm talking, you know, records from 30 years ago, 20 years ago, notes from volunteers or families, and we have kept them in a vertical file. We're trying to digitise those. Um, that's been a project that we've started this year, especially during the pandemic when we had a brief period where the library was shut and I just went straight into, we, I still got lots of queries still, but we went straight into digitising a lot of these things too, um, scanning them to make it easier to share with the view that we will be able to have these up on our catalogue as well. So we're trying to digitise. There is so much, and I've lost my volunteers at the moment due to the restrictions. I can't have local history volunteers in. Um, but once we have our volunteers back, we'll be getting into a lot more digitisation and getting these accessible via our website catalogue. 
and this, yeah, this is more examples of things that we have in physical format of snippets and old notes uh, and getting all this compiled. So microfilm. So let's talk about newspapers. So here at the local history room, we have the entire Gimpy Times on microfilm. Now this is up to um, June 2020 because as of this year, we had the last print edition of the Gimpy Times. Um, we have the Gimpy Times actually started as the Nashville Times and Mary River Mining Gazette. And the first edition was Saturday the 14th of February, 1868. So we know that James, or if you didn't know, I'll share it now. So James Nash um, claimed his um, he find, his gold. He staked his claim in Maribor, and that was the 16th of October, 1867. So the gold rush happened quite quickly. So within two weeks, we had thousands of people coming upon Gimpy, which had various names in the early times, referred to as Gimpy Creek, um, Nashville, of course, Gimpy, Nash's Gully is where the gold was found. Um, I think I've even seen Gimpy Creek and Maribor gold fields referred to, even though it was not Maribor, <laughs> a pretty big extension of Maribor. Um, but the Nashville Times went until the um, 15th of October, so of the same year, started at the 15th, 14th of February, and by the 15th of October they had changed it over to the Gimby Times and Mary River Mining Gazette. And this is because the most um, common story is that Nashville being referred to as Gimpy referred to as Nashville at the time, that the post was all going over to the overseas, the US Nashville. And if we think about how long it would have taken for post to get here and there, how much of that mail would have got lost. Um, so Gimpy was then Gimpy. It, they changed the name because of the confusion. So we have a microfilm reader and in, you can see the photo there of the machine. So they're, the um, newspapers are all on microfilm reel um, and this is because they store very well. Microfilm, um, the actual film is can last 500 years. Um, it's a wonderful way to still store newspaper. Um, Trove has the, Trove is a website, if you're not aware of Trove, um, Trove is a website that is run by the National Library of Australia and they have digitised a lot of Australian newspapers but not fully. Um, so the Gympie Times is only digitised up to the end of 1919. So you can look at our very early newspapers from the beginning, 1868, up until the end of 1919 on Trove website, which is trove.nla.gov.au. I will show that on the screen shortly. Um, you can do keyword searches for um, locality, anything, names. So you can keyword search the newspapers. But after the end of 1919, we don't have anything on Trove of the Gympie Times. So you can come here and book the microfilm. I'll show you how to use it. Um, you can bring a USB. It has a little USB port where you can put in um, a USB and save straight to USB. You can print as well, but um, we do charge for printouts. So it's very economical to just bring a USB and save it electronically because that's completely free. Um, you can crop and, and save um, full pages or just the section of the article. So it's wonderful, but the only part is it's not keyword searchable. So <laughs> it is a needle in a haystack. It's like grabbing a stack of newspapers and just turning the page. So you'll be just scrolling and reading and zooming in and out. And yes, but it's a journey. <laughs> and sometimes you might know a certain month that you want to look at or a certain year. Um, but if you don't and you're just generally looking, it, it's time consuming. But they're here and they're available for you. We also have in our local history room, we have a quite a collection of publications. So general, we have a general collection. We have a Gympie collection, 
um, we have a mining collection and a family collection. So in our general collection, we have a lot of architectural books um, on specifically on Australian on early Queensland architecture and some house guides on restoring houses and all sorts of different things. So they are really wonderful if you really want to pinpoint the era that, through the architectural style. I can also help with that. And there are also some wonderful guides online as well. And I might add them to the blog post today um, because there are some wonderful guides done by some of the other local councils which show some wonderful um, little PDFs that you can download. They're wonderful. Okay, so next slide. Ooh, I went too far. Here's just an example of photographs. So we do have some house photographs. Um, but as I said earlier, we don't have every single house in the region, but we always search. And um, some of the home photographs we do have very, very, we have some very, very early houses that most likely don't even exist anymore. And some of these aren't even identified. So you're quite welcome to have a look at those as well. Now, researching your home is very much also about people that lived there. And this is the part that I love too. Who are the people that lived in your home? What did they do? Where did they come from? How many family members lived there? These are only just some of the questions. So there's lots of things that we can think about. And what do you want to know? Um, and where, where can we find this information? So that's something that... Um, we can help you with as well. And one of the wonderful things that we have here with Gympie Regional Libraries is ancestry access, and it's free. And if you didn't know that, I'm so delighted to share that with you. So with um, our general ancestry um, access, it's normally available through our library Wi-Fi. So you have to be within one of our library branches generally. And I'm saying that because for the time being, due to COVID-19 and our pandemic that we're having, another history-making thing, um, you can actually access Ancestry remotely through the State Library of Queensland website. Now, they have gotten approval from Ancestry so that you can access that from home, and I'll show you shortly how. Um, that is has been happening for a few months now and it's just been extended again till the end temporary extension till the end of the 30th of september to the end of this month um, and that they do review that again towards the end of the month so due to our pandemic it would not surprise me if it was continued to be um, extended but in the meantime, if you are interested in looking at Ancestry and um, you don't already have access, so for free, you can jump on from home um, and it's wonderful. So we'll, we'll talk about what you can actually access through Ancestry that will help you with house history. And um, I will then, sh I'll show you at the end how to access and how to get onto Ancestry for free. Normally, um, through, without the, the current state library free from home access, you would come into your library branch, your Gympie Regional Library branch. Um, you would access our free Wi-Fi and you would click on the link through our website um, of Ancestry Library Edition. So Library Edition is pretty much the same as Ancestry except for um, if you had a paid subscription to Ancestry, you would be able to build your own family tree. So there's a component of Ancestry where you can go in and input data and build your own family tree. You can't do that with Library Edition, but you can view and access and download from the family trees that are in Ancestry. So you can still see everyone else's family tree. You just can't create your own because Ancestry Library Edition is like a community edition. So you don't actually individually log in with your own account. So therefore you can't have your own family tree. Um, but you can, as I said, you can view all those family trees. Okay, so let's talk about what you can actually access in Ancestry that is really helpful for house history. So electoral rolls. The electoral roll records in Ancestry go from 1903 to 1980. 
And these sometimes, the early ones, may show house names. Um, I have come across the odd one that has shown a house name. Now, remembering that they won't have house numbers until after, I think, the 1941 electorals will have house numbers, but even then, some of our localities, like, for example, if I was looking at Kandanga, um, even though the Gympie City, the house numbers come in, some of our country localities still didn't have the house numbers in the electoral rolls, um, so they would still only have a street name. So the electoral rolls are fantastic of going back. So when we're looking at the valuation registers um, and the Gympie ones that I do have here of Gympie City that only go to 1914, I then jump over the ancestry and I have a look um, at the electoral rolls and that takes me back further um, and earlier into 1903, if your house is that old. <laughs> um, there also is the city directories. So ancestry has um, a section where you can look at directories and when you click on it, I'll do some demonstrations towards the end when I'll get the website up and share my screen. Um, you can view some of the post office directories and the country directories. So some of these were called pews and then wises took over um, and they will show um, not so much like general home ownership, but they do show um, like, what am I trying to think of saying, like the boot makers and the butchers and the builders. So if you're the person that you, you're, researching a person or a family and they had a business as well. Like this, some of these are really handy on having a look at um, where people were working as well in their career. You might be researching a house that has a storefront involved with it um, because there were a lot of homes in our area that had storefronts um, and businesses from home as well. Now, the family trees in Ancestry as well that I talked about. So the data in the family tree section is built and inputted by users, so it may also con contain incorrect information. So if you're looking at the family tree section, please take the information with a grain of salt if the information doesn't include or cite a source. So if it does cite a source, they are reputable if they're um, linking to like a birth, death, marriage record or database, government records, if it links to a scan of a birth certificate or some kind of article or evidence. But if it's just a piece of information, <coughs> excuse me, um, yeah, it could be incorrect information. So just use it as a lead and you can confirm it in other ways. But they are worth looking at still because they're a great source of shared documentation and photographs. So in the family trees, there are three tabs where you can look at facts or a timeline or a gallery. And in the gallery section is where people who are building these family trees can share attachments. So they could be copies of photos and articles and bits and pieces and I always go straight to those and if they have photographs I get very excited. So they are really worthwhile having a look at. And we talked about Trove earlier. So if you don't know what Trove is, Trove is, is the website um, brought to us by the National Library of Australia and it is not just newspapers. I did talk about that you can access the digitised Gimpy Times up to the end of 1919. Um, but you can also find out about local people and, and houses and whatever you're researching in other newspapers as well. So if we're looking at early Gimpy, it's also beneficial to look at the Maribara Chronicle because Gimpy and Maribara history, a lot of people came in from Maribara. Um, they might have been living at Maribara or just travelling through it, but Maribara reported a lot about Gympie as well. So the Maribara Chronicle is a wonderful one to look at as well. And other significant um, articles got published in like the Telegraph and Brisbane papers. For example, there could be wedding um, write-ups or um, engagement notices 
of significant um, events did get also reported um, in the Brisbane papers. So you can look at other wider um, areas that are digitised through Trove. And it's not just newspapers, it's also gazettes. There's maps and images and lots of other archives. So it's very worthwhile doing the search um, with Trove. I go there a lot. And I'll give you a couple of little tips, but one day I think we might do a, a session on just Trove because you can get a lot out of it. And if you get lost in Trove, it, it, it's nice to do a little bit of a talk about that. But within Trove also is um, they do have some videos and a help section. So up along the top in there, there's a little link for help. Go in there if you get lost because there are tips on how to get the best out of your searches, including videos, and I think they're fantastic. So have a look in the help section um, and you may be able to get better results. Here are my three quick tips for Trove. I use quotation marks. So if I'm looking for, an example, a name Skyring and a locality, this is how I do it. In the search box, you can see that I've put in quotation marks, Skyring, and then straight beside it, another set of quotation marks, and I put Gimpy. And this is so that it looks for those two terms or those two keywords in the same thing but separately. So they're not looking for Skyring, Gimpy being two words exactly beside each other in an article, but it's looking for those keywords somewhere on the page. Sometimes I do the search and I include Gimpy and then when I get my results, I then take out Gimpy and then just search scarring in those areas because um, I just wanted to see where Gimpy would come up with. Less is more. So, some, so showing I wouldn't put in somebody's first name. So if it was Jeremiah Skyring. Um, I less is more because then you can go and refine your results. So once you get your results over in the top, um, over in the right hand section, there's this refine your results box and you can narrow down to Queensland or the paper. Oops. And then there's also categories. So for example, you can look at articles, um, advertisements and family notices. I wouldn't suggest typing in like a street address like 43 Lawrence Street, for example, because, of course, earlier times we didn't have the street numbers. So less is more. I would put in just Lawrence and Gympie or just Lawrence and then refine your results to Queensland and then go from there. So less is more. And an example of that also is if I was looking for a person called Jeremiah Skyring, he might be referred to as Messus Skyring, J Skyring, JL Skyring. So um, think about if you do find their full name, how many different ways you can search for that person. So I have had different results with just trying so many combinations. So try as much as you can. So try J dot Skyring or J space Skyring or just Skyring or Jeremiah Skyring going and also some of those early male names were condensed so for example charles is referred to as chas george geo that's just an example john sometimes well i think was jno so they were abbreviated so think about that as well that's another tip <laughs> and also tip number three um with newspapers so you, there is a category you can refine even further down. If you're overwhelmed with like six pages of results and hundreds of results, I do recommend that you can just refine and look at one category at a time. So if you went down to your refine results box and then looked at and just selected articles, for example, or advertisements or family notices, so family notices is a category where they refine just like your birth notices or your um, just community notices because sometimes in the early times the people put in advertisements saying, I'm going to be out of town for two weeks. I won't be at my home. So those kind of things are fantastic. Um, and there's also um, 
advertisements. Don't discount advertisements because they're not just like advertisements for like the clothing sale at, Col- at Colonnines. It's advertisements can be land sales, estate notices, insolvencies, transmission of title by death notices are great because they will tell you property details. So always look in the advertising. That's important. Okay, let's go on. Here we're jumping to imagery. So here's another website that can help you. It's called Q Imagery. Now, when you go to Q Imagery, the first page that comes up is like a you check a box that you agree to the terms of the website. And then you can go through and click this magnifying glass and do your search. So you can pop in like, for example, Gimpy and then just a street address. Less is more sometimes, remember? But if you do have other details, you can try that. And then what this, what Q imagery is, it's a collection of like aerials and government imagery that has been used over time. For example, aerials for roads or railways. Um, and that what they've done is they've popped them up and you can actually zoom into certain sections and overlay and load these aerials onto um, certain areas. And... These can be helpful. Sometimes you can't zoom in too much on them, but they do let you pinpoint if you're looking at some historical maps. So you might be looking at 1920 or 1940. You can sometimes confirm, okay, yes, there was a house here or no, there wasn't a building there. So, and you can look at the area as well. So that, that's really handy to know about that website as well. So what else do we have at Gympie Regional Libraries? So we have, as I mentioned, we have collections here in the room of publications. We have a big Gympie collection that includes books that people have written about localities. We have lots of centenary school books, which include about the pioneers and people. So there's stories in them, not just about the school, about the early pioneering history of the area. Um, and family histories. We do have a collection of what people do give us. Um, it might be documentation of their research as well as people have done up their own little books and things. So come and have a look at them if um, you might find something that relates to your home. Um, and, and again, I'm here in the local history room Wednesdays to Fridays at the Gympie Library. That's 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. Um, so this room is a public room. You can come in whenever the library is open. All the um, materials in the local history room are not for loan. So it's like a research room, a reading room. We do have a scanner and photocopier. Bring a USB in if you want to scan. It's free to scan things. Um, but we've got to keep copyright in mind here as well. So with copyright, um, you can only copy about 10% of the works and or equivalent to one chapter. So we've got to keep that in mind as well so we don't break copyright, copyright law. Um, and I can help you with navigating our collections and the room and give you advice, further advice on ancestry and trove research. Um, so you can come in and, and have a chat with me if you're stuck or, you, yeah, we can have a chat. Some other local organisations that will help you, like I mentioned earlier, and what they have. So family, the Gympie Family History Society has land records. So if you look at their website, um, you can search Gympie Family History Society or it's just gfhs.com or .org, I think it is. Um, they have land records as well. So they salvage some records from the land department. They have on their website a tab called Lists and you can also go by alphabet, which shows family names. So you can look and see what they have. It's their index. So you won't be able to see what the items are. It's an index to what they have. And then you can go up and contact them through the society. Um, so they have an index and you'll be able to see what sort of things they hold. Um, and then there's an individual land record index as well. Now, these are land records, so these are like titles and deeds and all sorts of information. So if you, you've got some early pioneering land or just have a look in the land records and you may find something that is worthwhile um, putting in a query and getting a copy of. 
um, Family History Society also has family histories and photographs and a whole different archive to what we hold as well. So they are very worthwhile seeing as well. And again, as I said, the muse Mining Museum and, and the, his the Gympian District Mining and Historical Museum, they have some um, Gibby Times collections. They have maps, displays, photographs, family history. So it's very worthwhile going and having a look there as well. And I did talk about the Department of Natural Resources earlier um, for copies of deeds. So State Library of Queensland is very um, important to mention as well. So when you go to the State Library of Queensland website, this isn't the first page, but you can see the search box on the first page and it allows you to either search the website or the collection. If you pick collection, then it will take you over to OneSearch or you can go direct to OneSearch. I think it's like onesearch.slq.gov.au. Um, and you can search the State Library collections. What do they have? Well, you can see here they have digitised collections, they have photographs, they have publications. Um, so it's very worthwhile having a dig around in State Library as well because they are a repository on um, the built history and the Queensland history. So that also includes our local areas. They also have the John Oxley Library, which is um, specific to regions, and the John Oxley Library collections you can search on State Library Queensland, and they also have a blog. So the State Library of Queensland John Oxley blog is a wonderful read. So Google John Oxley blog and um, yes, it's wonderful as well. So specific on the State Library of Queensland website, I just wanted to mention because it is um, wonderful information that could be transferable and helpful to you in your house history. So part of um, the website, when you go to the home page, you've got this black banner along the top of State Library of Queensland. If you click on the very left research and collections, you'll get a drop down box and one of them you can click on Queensland Built Heritage. And that's the image that I've got up on the screen on the left there. And have a scroll down the rest of that page and there's quite a bit of information and things that you can go over and have a look on about Built Heritage. And there's also one of those links is to House History page which is this other image here. Now the House Histories page has wonderful information. It's got a video, it's got uh, articles, so much um, extra information is all compiled on that one page. I really do recommend you having a look at the State Library of Queensland House Histories page. It's very good, very, very good. Well done. Now, another thing that has come out of State Library of Queensland, if you haven't heard of it, this excites me as well, Corley Explorer. So what has happened um, is Frank and Eunice Corley, they were photographers and they drove around in a pink Cadillac, I kid you not, and they took photos of homes and they sold them back to the homeowners in promotional products. So they may have sold you back your photo or you could have had it in a calendar. Um, and so a lot of the, as you can see, it says on the screen, two thirds of the photographs were sold to householders. So the ones that were sold to householders, I believe were, I think the negatives were sold to them as well. Or they, we just don't have the house photos that got sold to the homeowners. So this remaining 61,000 images were donated to the State Library and the State Library has spent a lot of time getting these digitised and put up in this wonderful interactive website. So you can go to the website. It works better in Chrome browser, Google Chrome browser. Um, and I go straight to places in the tab and then you can see um, Gimpy is one of them. And there's 980 photographs from Gimpy. Um, and a lot of them, it's been up for about a, oh, it must be over a year now this website's been up for, um, probably nearly two years. 
And a lot of the GIMPI photographs have actually been identified, so there's street addresses now. And there's an interactive map, so you can scroll in and out of the map, which will you can pinpoint where your street is and see where the photographs have been identified as little dots on the map. So you can click on a street and see what kind of photos. But there are some that are also still not identified. So go have a look. You might be able to identify some of the gimpy homes that haven't yet been pinpointed as an address. And I say it's interactive because if you know one of the homes, you can also upload extra photos, stories, um, architectural notes, it, you can really build upon this website and the record of those homes. Now, the homes, the photos are from the 60s and the 1970s, um, so it's, it's worthwhile having a look. Um, so that is a wonderful website to have a look at changes in your home as well, what it looked like could, because people have renovated homes of the modern times as well so it's it's well worth looking at now it's just some other quick websites to mention as well um, and as i said this um is being recorded and the talk will be put up on our youtube channel so these um links will all be up there and i will add them into our blog post on house histories as well um, so there are queensland state archives link i did mention um, Queensland State Archives do have the Widgee Shire Council evaluation registers um, as well as other things. So um, if you're looking at school history, um, you might have an old schoolhouse. Um, that is definitely um, lots of school government school records in Queensland State Archives. Um, and the Friar Library, Queensland University have a Friar Library, so it has lots of architect and architectural records, a lot of Brisbane based, but worthwhile looking at as well. They contains plans and drawings and photos, and it's just really interesting if you're interested in the architectural style of your home as well. And um, Brisbane has some wonderful um, council archives um, and help for about history of your house so it's well worthwhile looking at some of the links here as well the more information helps you the better now as i mentioned gimpy regional library also has our blog it's called gimpy regional memories and the link there gimpy regional memories.com so our blog we have a search bar and if you just type in house um, you'll come to our researching your house article um, you can have a read there, but I will add after the talk, I will pop all these links down the bottom in this article so that you can have a, a record of the quick links there. So I'll, I'll pop all those um, links in today. But you can have a look. Um, there is a, a cute little article about the house numbering system there as well as some, a lot of the information that I've talked about today. All right, so well, what I might do now, we're going over a little time, but I'll spend the next five minutes if you wanted me to just show you the websites. I will go back and I will bring up the internet and I might just bring up and show you how to find ancestry access from home. I think that, that one will excite you. So if you want to get the free from home um, ancestry access that I mentioned earlier, that is temporarily made until the 30th of September, that you can access it for free from home and it may be reviewed again at the end of the month and extended, go to the State Library website. Just Google State Library Queensland or you can go straight to slq.qld.gov.au. Now to find it... <laughs> Oh, there's a survey. We'll just click out of that for a second. So go to Research and Collections up on the tab here. Don't need to click it. You just need to hover over it. Go down to eResources. Click that. Now you can have a look at all that stuff, but you can actually access many of these throughout the Gimpy Library as well. We're going to go straight to the databases. Now... 
there are some newspaper other spaces here. But down here, family history. So scroll down a little bit. So we have the Ancestry Library Edition. So find my past, you won't be able to access from home. It's only at the State Library, I believe. But if we click on Ancestry. Now, this is your login. So basically what it means is you have to be a State Library member, which don't panic. It's completely free and instant. So you just register there. Once you click on that, it will just ask you for your name, email address, and you create a username and a password. That's it, and you're in. So I'll just quickly put mine in. Hopefully you won't see my password. No, <laughs> I'm good. Just being cheeky. <laughs> Hopefully I can remember my password. It's so boring. I did the yay. Everybody say yay. Okay, so this is what you do when you log in after you've registered, um, and then you can log in. This is Ancestry Library Edition. So I'll just quickly show you those um, points of interest that I did mention on earlier. So if you want to do, do a general person search, I usually just go search all categories. If you found out who lived in your home, you can search a last name. I can't think of one right now. Let's just go one of my ancestors. Uh, which might not actually work because I can't remember when he lived there. Um, always click the full um, suggestion and then I'll just put, I think he was George. But sometimes less is more. Sometimes, oops, I put it in the wrong box. I do that all the time. Last name is over here. I always put last name first. Try again. I'll just show you by doing this, if you do know somebody's surname, it's quick to find and confirm electoral rolls and things. So if this is your results, you can see I'm getting some results with city directories, which is what I talked about with the post office directories. Um, I'm not getting any electoral rolls. It will say electoral roll. I'll just look at the second page. If you don't put in a locality, you will get lots of like, here we have America or um, Germany, but you will get lots of America. Um, I didn't get an electoral roll. Let's go back. Let's try. Oops, can't type. Oh, I did it again. You see how many times I put in the surname in the wrong box? I do that every time. You can't teach your old dog new tricks. <laughs> okay, do we get an electoral this time? You can go straight to your filter categories. I didn't get one this time. But you will see electoral rolls. Um, I just, I've gone blank. I can't think of who to look up. Okay, <laughs> so um, have a look at these results and play around with them. But if you did search a person, for example, I've searched a person here in Gimpy. This is where you can go to family trees here in your filter. So if you click on family trees, and as I said, use it as a lead, take it with a grain of salt. Um, there are private and public family trees and it will tell you a public member tree or a private one you won't be able to see. You have to click and ask permission. Um, so, for example, let's just go to this one has photos. So let's click this one. So you'll get a different view. So you get a life story view or the facts view. They're just different ways that the information is presented. So if somebody's, for example, entered in this birth information, take it with a grain of salt because that's people typing it in. But it is good lead. It could be completely correct. It could be not. We don't know unless there's a source involved. But 
they are wonderful to have a look at and to to build upon your histories. Um, I use, I like the fact view just because it's easier for me to look at and it gives you the sources as well. So, for example, down here, somebody's listed a marriage and here's the source. And if you click on view, um, sometimes it will give you the source. There's no source attached to it, but you can actually attach like an ancestry database to things. And if somebody's attached it to it, then it's pretty good to confirm that that information is correct. Um, you can also attach, people have attached electoral roles. So you can have a look at the sources as well. And gallery. Gallery is the one where I said that people can share photographs and their sources and bits and pieces. So always have a look in that if you're looking um, because you could have photos of people in front of their house um, and it's just great because it saves you a lot of time if you look at them first um, and then go from there. Uh, I'll also want to just go back and also show you how to get just directly to the city directories. So this is the home page. I clicked home. Go down to here where it says city directories. If you're just wanting to browse it without doing a search on a specific person, so we we'll click on that and then I go straight to Australia and then I go Queensland, depending on what you want to look at, and then I go to the Australia city directories are the ones that I like the most. So we click on that. There are other, other ones you can look at there. Um, I love this page because you can then, it also gives you the link to the electoral rolls and other, if you're looking at other, if you want to um, search other properties that you might have grow, grown up in Sydney or had a relative that lived in Sydney, there are ones for New South Wales and, um, yeah, so the, there's lots of Australia-based um, information in here. But if I'm looking at specifically to Queensland, and then here are the years. So if I wanted to look at very early Gympie, I might go to anywhere from 1867 onwards. Let's try, let's just look at 1871. And then it does go into Wise's directories a bit later on. And I click on it. Now, these are big directories. They have a lot of Queensland and Brisbane-based stuff. What I normally do if I want to just browse Gimpy is I have a look at down here at page numbers and I will just randomly guess page 300 and just see where it takes me. Oh, here's the very start of the alphabetical list of stations and post towns. So if I go a bit further and try 370. And what page we got here? So we're still in Brisbane. Some of the earlier ones, um, I get a bit lost in. <laughs> but later on, um, you will find that they get quite large. So they can be over a thousand pages, these directories. And then you'll get the country towns listings. Um, this one might be too early some of them only have a little bit of gimpy oh dear just gone all the way back let's have a quick look again Queensland city directory and let's have a look at for example and then you can see that it goes into the wises directories just look at a 1920 wisest directory. Then I'll jump over and show you a couple of quick other websites and that might be it for our session today. But we will go, whoops, oh, go away. <laughs> okay, so we're going to pop in, let's go page 800, have a look. You can zoom in and out. Uh, get the full page like that. So here I've just gone. I've just gone direct to page eight hundred, and you can see I've got into an alphabetical directory, which is by people's names. Let's have a look what happens. There should be a town directory. 
Here we go. So if I go earlier, I've gone back to 400, page 400. These are the town directories. So we're in N, so if we go back, try and find Gimpy. I've gone too far back, haven't I? Where am I? Oh, no, I up the top, I'm in Ipswich. We will find Gimpy. So we're getting closer. I've got G. You can just go one page at a time by clicking arrows. Gamari's down there. Got a fair way to go for Gimpy still. Let's try 306. Usually go white. Here we go. Here's Gimpy. So the first page back here. Gives you a little description, mining companies, and then goes into alphabetical listing. Some of the early ones don't have an alphabetical listing. It's listed by categories of like businesses. So it might be fruiterers, storekeepers, produce, boot makers, churches, whatever. So um, they're a little bit different each time, but great little things to look at. Okay, so let's have a real quick look at we'll go we'll continue with state library um just to show you i've shown you where to get through to ancestry let's have a look at that house history um link mm -hmm. so we've got to go to i've got to remember where it is uh, discover plan my visit where did I say it was? Built heritage. So still sticking in resource and collect research and collections. Go to built heritage under Queensland. And there is this wonderful page that I mentioned about. And there are some interesting things to read. Look at all of that. And then down the bottom here, house history. Click on that when you're finished looking at that page. And this is State Library's wonderful, um, they've got a whole heap of talks here, a five-part talk. It's wonderful. Have a listen to that. You might want to do that this morning. <laughs> um, and there is a whole heap of blog-style posts here about beginning your research. Very similar information to what I've given you, but it might be there might be some Brisbane-based information. But it, remember, State Library of Queensland is Queensland wide as well, so it'll be very general, great information as well. So have a look at it all; it's wonderful, and how the State Library can help you with their collections as well. Um, and we'll, I think that might be it. Does anyone have any questions? I can, if you can go to the chat box or I can unmute microphones. Um, but if you have any questions, I will hang around here now for the, the next five, ten minutes and um, answer some questions. And um, we might finish there for just the general talk. Um, but I hope you've really enjoyed um, this little journey today. And thank you. This is my first time with Zoom. So thank you for putting up with my little ums and ahs and what am I doing? <laughs> and um, as I said, I'm Rochelle Bull, Give Your Regional Library's local history officer. I work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from the local history room. But the local history room is available whenever the Gimpy Library is open. So you can come in and have a look at the collections and do some research. We have a large table, a scanner, bring your USB and um, an open mind to go on the journey. So thank you very much for attending. And if you've got any questions and you can find the chat box, ask away. I'll stay here for the next 10 minutes and um, keep going over to um, our Gimpy Regional Memories blog later and you can have a look and I'll add in lots of links to our house history post. So thank you very much for joining me. It's been wonderful.